Okay, thanks so much, Lisa. Um, so today I'm gonna uh, give an overview uh, about some of the research on teacher diversity um, and what that means for thinking about policies and practices and what we should be doing moving forward. Um, so the bulk of what I'm going to talk about today actually comes from a book that uh, my colleagues and I recently published um, by a Harvard Education Press. Um, and this is really meant to be a book that is uh, actionable and has items that are interesting and able to be used. And so um, if you know policymakers or, or other stakeholders um, who might be interested in it, the book is definitely written in such a way that um, folks can, can access it. So um, motivation for this work, um, and you know, as the motivation for all of the work that all of us do, um, is thinking about closing these very persistent and stubborn achievement gaps. So next slide, please. Um, and so we think that right now, thinking about um, these gaps and the interest in equity, we think teacher diversity is a critical way to close some of these gaps. And I'll talk about why that is and sort of the preponderance of evidence um, that has been created sort of, or that has been sort of uh, researched and, and shown that teachers of color make a difference um, in particular for students of color, but it's important for all students to have access to a high quality, uh, uh, diverse workforce. Next slide. So currently, um, today's teacher workforce is not representative of students. And this actually comes from a webinar that I did when I was still at the, the Urban Institute that you can go find, it's still on their website. Um, but basically, nationally, we know that uh, teachers are largely white, they are largely female, and there are huge representation gaps between uh, teachers of color and students of color. Um, here, though, I'd like to point out uh, a few things. So one, if you think about sort of the the, if you think about the difference between the blue and yellow bars as representation gaps, you can see that gaps are actually the largest for Latinx students, which is actually something that I found quite surprising, um, but that, that is often overlooked in some of our discussions around teacher diversity. And I could talk a little bit about why that is in a second. But sort of nationally, we know that we have um, these huge gaps in representation, although there is nuance um, sort of based on where you are geographically. Next slide. And so basically what we're proposing is a roadmap for teacher diversity. Um, and so uh, I'm gonna sort of be switching back and forth as I'm talking about um, the work today, because some of this, uh, some of the stuff we need to do has to happen sort of right now with the workforce that we have. And then we also have to be thinking about what's gonna happen in the long term, right? And so I thought that slide that was uh, shown earlier that sort of shows this pipeline um, we have challenges now and we're gonna have challenges later if we don't sort of intervene um, and think about uh, what the workforce is going to look like. And so um, the policy approaches that are being pursued are often tripped up uh, because the, the goals are not complete. Um, they have unrealistic timelines, right? And so we wanna just think about, again, this issue of sort of thinking about long-term versus short-term. Um, and then sometimes they work at cross purposes. And so you might go raid a bunch of teachers from another district, but that's not helping sort of the whole workforce, right? And so we have to think about um, how these things are sort of working in concert with each other. And so, um, so what we're setting out to do in the book is basically trying to give some evidence-based policy recommendations um, and really to sort of capitalize on, on this current interest in uh, uh, teacher diversity, which we think is super exciting. Next slide. So I won't spend too much time on it, but there's uh, a ton of evidence now, um, mostly owing to the fact that because we now have had many, many years of these very uh, comprehensive state longitudinal data systems where we're able to sort of look at things over time and look at things with very large samples, we've been able to build on previous studies that looked at sort of the role of teachers of color that maybe had smaller samples that used um, qualitative perspectives. And so we've been able to sort of um, uh, replicate and show that with, with very large samples in lots of different places, that same race teachers have impacts on a host of outcomes. So I have some work with Cassie Hart at UC Davis where we look at exclusionary discipline. Um, there are studies that show uh, improvements in test scores. Uh, teachers of color have higher expectations for students of color. Um, and students of color are, are have a higher likelihood of being placed into gifted and talented programs. Um, my colleagues and I also have a paper where we show that having a black teacher in kindergarten um, increases the chance of graduating high school and enrolling in college. And so um, 
And here I'll just, I'll take a, a little point of privilege and say that a lot of these studies are actually based on um, matches between black teachers and black students, because many of the states that have these um, longitudinal data systems don't have the, uh, the large populations of Latinx teachers that we would need to sort of look at some of these analyses uh, from a quantitative perspective. Um, but you know the the hypothesis is still there that those teachers have um, similar impacts on their students as well, and so given the sort of preponderance of evidence, um, we sort of make the claim that diversity is quality, right? Um, so instead of thinking about diversity as being sort of opposed to quality or orthogonal to quality, we think that the ability to increase outcomes, um, whether it's social emotional things or uh, academic outcomes, should be considered as a part of the sort of set of things that make up teacher quality. And I'll, I'll come back to that. Um, and then this is, isn't just in K-12, right? There's similar race matching effects in other settings like healthcare, uh, law, law enforcement, sports. And so I, I make this joke that I could just keep writing the same paper for, for different industries, but I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> um, next slide. So the other key piece of this too, is that not only do we sort of just need more teachers of color, we also have to increase exposures to teachers of color, right? And so by that, we just mean that you have to be thinking about sort of the workforce that you do have right now, and maybe there's opportunities to sort of engineer um, more, uh, more ways for kids of color to experience teachers of color or, or all students. Um, and so, what we're showing here in this table is basically that if you're a white student, you're just more likely to be exposed to a white teacher over time. Um, and uh, this is less, less so is less so uh, for other other students of color. Next slide. So we hypothesize that uh, diversity affects students in sort of uh, three different ways. Um, one, this question of teacher expectations of students' abilities and success. Um, teachers of color are more likely to offer uh, inclusive, relevant content in their instruction. Um, and then um, some of our evidence shows that uh, it's just simply, or not simply, but one piece of it is a role model effect, right? So if you, um, in particular, in our long run paper, we show that the effects are largest for young black boys who do not have a college educated parent at home. They are more likely to attend college if they experience that teacher very, very, very early on. Um, and so these mechanisms aren't mutually exclusive, but you might start to think about different policy implications sort of based on why you think um, these teachers are impacting these students. And, you know, we also want to keep coming back to the point that this also benefits white students as well. Um, their students show more empathy, more uh, tolerance for people of other backgrounds, um, and this is pretty consistent with a long body of work in the, in the psychology literature. Next slide. Um, and so Dr. Guyton did a, a wonderful job sort of uh, talking about the history, but as someone said in the chat, you know, thinking about this history is really critical because we don't want to repeat it, right? Um, we want to, you know, as we are faced with the challenges sort of in the post-COVID era, we don't want to repeat some of the things that we've done in earlier, earlier historical eras. Um, and this is a critical sort of element in thinking about students' access to quality schooling. And as we're continuing to discuss what integration means, we also have to think about how that impacts the workforce. Next slide. And so um, since sort of the, the loss of, of um, Black teachers in particular, um, we've seen increased sort of numbers of teachers of color, but the representation gaps are still very large. And so we have to continue to think about sort of what does our student population look like sort of in, in comparison to our teacher population. And so while the numbers might be getting larger sort of incrementally over time, we have a lot to do to think about this uh, representation piece. So the other critical piece too, and I think this is actually what makes this something, an issue area that's really exciting to work on, right? Which is that um, there are leaks, the leaks aren't exciting, but this makes it exciting work for us. <laughs> there are leaks in the teacher pipeline sort of at every stop, right? So you can think about, we just don't have the number of college graduates of color that we want, right? So in some ways at its heart, this is really a K-12 uh, access issue. But even moving sort of along the pipeline, um, education schools are more white than the student bodies in which they're housed, unless um, you're talking about the, minor the nation's minority serving institutions who do more than their fair share of producing our teachers of color. 
even amongst the ed majors who enter teaching, um, teachers, uh, our teachers of color are more likely to leave. Um, and then we know that attrition is also sort of different by race due to different working conditions faced when folks get into the classroom. Um, and then, but we know that sort of once getting into the classroom, um, turnover isn't necessarily the challenge. It's really because teachers of color are more likely to work in high needs and hard to staff hard to staff places. And a lot of times they're getting into the work because they want to work in those types of schools, but we have to consider um, that they may be burned out. Um, and we might wanna consider other ways to sort of distribute them within districts so that they don't end up burned out. Um, okay, uh, next slide. So um, so we try to make this, this, what we think is a kind of provocative claim, but we think is really important, which is that teacher diversity is teacher quality. And so, for example, if you are a principal and you hire a Latinx teacher and he or she ends up um, serving as a translator for your majority ELL population, we think that work should be compensated. It should be um, considered as a part of sort of the duties. And we know that that's like kind of a, um, it's a new way of thinking about some of this stuff, but we think that because we know these teachers have these impacts on these, these outcomes, we have to bring it into our definition of quality. Um, and so you can think about sort of, you know, teacher, teacher, um, all of the challenges that sort of face the teacher profession. We think that, you know, teacher diversity is sort of just one spoke on an umbrella. And so we really wanna bring it into our larger discussion of how do we define quality? How do we reward quality? How do we predict quality? Um, and it's, it's outside our scope, but we talk a little bit about how you have to think about the legal constraints on policy action and thinking about teacher race. Um, there are lots of constraints, obviously, on hiring and firing decisions, but there's lower stakes on things about strategic deployment, right? And so if you believe the evidence that, you know, having at least one teacher of color matters for students, you can think about ways to um, creatively work with the workforce that you might have now. Uh, next slide. So we suggest that there's um, some uh, policy approaches. Um, so I think you can uh, advance forward because it's going to build up there. Okay, yes, there we go. Um, so uh, one is sort of opening the tap uh, on teachers of color into schools. Um, we are extremely excited about grow your own programs, teacher residencies, which seem to be very promising, both in terms of um, teachers uh, sticking around longer and also in, um, having positive impacts on test scores and just being able to sort of fulfill districts needs with um, you know, the, the types of teachers that they know that they need for the types of positions that are available um, in their district. Um, we think that you, uh, districts can embrace alternative certifications. Um, we know that um, of, of many of the teachers of color who end up in the classroom now, many of them come through alternative route programs. And so we think that can be an exciting way um, to increase the numbers of teachers of color. Uh, we caution against poaching, so not just stealing from other districts. <laughs> uh, you know, we're trying to sort of uh, lift everybody up. Um, and this is another piece that I think is extremely exciting is lowering the teacher career ladder to provide entry to paraprofessionals. And I know that sort of post COVID, there are places that are experimenting with this. I know that Rhode Island, for example, um, is doing a program where they're, they're um, training their paraprofessionals to become um, fully certified teachers. And I think that's, that's great. Um, the other sort of uh, policy recommendation is thinking about um, engineering opportunities for more exposures to teachers of color, right? So go back to what we said about, about that piece of, about the evidence, about having at least one. Um, we think like the NFL, uh, hiring managers and principals should use the Rooney rule in hiring teachers and leaders of color, which basically just means that you make sure that your applicant pool is diverse, right? You, you, you actively go out and seek it, um, thinking about tracking exposures, strategic assignment, um, and then other ways to just expose, expose um, students of color to adults of color. Uh, next slide. And then finally, um, since we don't have the, the workforce that we're aspiring to be, we think that you know everyone could focus on developing cultural, cultural competency, right? So thinking about culturally responsive pedagogy um, and other sorts of trainings that um, allow teachers to explore their own biases and how they might how that might play out in their teaching. Next slide. Um, and so we have some selected policy recommendations in the book, and I think we can get into these um, 
in in the in the Q and A if we I think we'll have time. Um, but there's sort of like I said, this is exciting work because there's action to be done at every level, right? Um, you can think about uh, state leaders and that definition of what teacher quality is. You can think about district and school leaders as hiring managers. Um, from the federal perspective, we need um, data, work around data and monitoring. Um, there's a lot of work to be done for prep programs. Um, and then of course, us researchers, uh, we, we always wanna ask for more resources to do more research. <laughs> And with that, I think I'll turn it over to Lisa.